Welcome to the video guide for the 25-man version of Blood Queen Lanathal. I'm Lydus, and this video is from my point of view as an elemental shaman. My guild is NVM on US PvP server Arthas Alliance. The Blood Queen has 59.4 million hit points with a 5 minute 30 second heart and rage timer. This may seem like an impossible task, but the Blood Queen herself gives us an ability with which to defeat her. She has an ability called Pact of the Dark Fallen, where three random raid members are linked by a red beam and shadow damage is dealt to linked players and nearby non-linked players. Once all linked targets are within five yards of each other, the link disappears. The affected raid members should meet in the center of the room, which should be kept clear. The tank and blood mirror link do not have this cast on them. The next debuff she uses is called Swarming Shadows. Similar to Legion Flame and the Jaraxxus fight of TOC, the player will spawn purple clouds beneath them every second which must be dropped away from the raid. Earlier I ran to the stairs since they were close to me in order to drop the shadows out of the way, but if you are in another part of the room you should run to the wall and along the perimeter in order to minimize the real estate of shadows in your raid. They will do damage to anyone standing in them. Throughout the encounter, a raid-wide aura called Shroud of Sorrow emanates from the boss, which deals 4500 shadow damage every 2 seconds to everyone in the room. This damage increases as more people in the raid become vampires. Ranged and healer should be 6 shards apart to prevent splash damage from Twilight Blood Bolt. Yes, they really called it that. Periodically, she will hurl a Blood Bolt at a random player, causing up to 10,750 in shadow damage to that player and anyone else within 6 yards. We have our melee split into two groups to minimize the splash damage of the Blood Bolts in case she targets one of them. Healers should stand near the edge of the circle in the center of the room so they can safely reach everyone without having to worry about ranged encroaching upon their position. When she is initially engaged, and after each air phase, she will link your tank and the player closest to them with a spell called Blood Mirror. The linked player takes shadow damage equal to the damage the tank takes, so it's a good idea to have someone with a lot of hit points, such as an off tank, soak up this damage. Every 20 to 25 seconds she will use Delirious Slash in front of her, which has a 10 yard range, inflicts 50% weapon damage, and puts a 15 second bleed tick on the target, which does up to 6,750 damage every 3 seconds for 15 seconds. This ability hits both tanks. 15 seconds into the encounter, the first Vampiric Bite goes out. This deals 12,025 to 13,975 damage to the target and infuses them with Essence of the Blood Queen, increasing your damage by 100%. Your attacks will also heal you. It's believed she bites the DPS who is highest on her threat table. She never bites the tank, the blood mirror target, or a healer. She will only cast this spell once, on one player, so if this person dies before they are able to spread it to another player, it will be a wipe. After being bitten, you have one minute to go all out on DPS. You don't have to worry about aggro because your attacks will cause no threat. After one minute, you then have 10 seconds to bite another player or you will get mind controlled. Your health, damage, and healing are all increased by crazy amounts. You're hard if not impossible to kill and everyone will yell at you. If the first person bitten is a melee class, have their first bite go to your ranged. If the first bite is on a ranged, have them bite a melee. When it's time for the second round of bites, you now have one melee and one ranged class who can spread the love to their respective groups, with ranged biting another ranged and melee biting another melee. After that, it is up to your raid to coordinate who bites whom. There are add-ons one person in the raid can use to coordinate bite orders, or you can just communicate in vent, with one person calling out the first few bites. We like to talk in vent and haven't had any problems. As a last resort, or in an extreme emergency, you can bite a healer, but it's best to only bite healers if you've run out of DPS due to deaths. It's important to note that if even one DPS dies, you could find yourself hitting the enrage timer, so everyone needs to stay alive. The most annoying thing she does is an air phase. Approximately two minutes after being engaged, she will go into her first air phase. Lanothal runs to the center of the room and fears everyone for four seconds with an ability called Incite Terror. Shaman should have a Tremor Totem down before this phase, and Fear Ward will also work. 
After the fear, it is important the raid immediately spreads out six yards apart because she will fly into the air and do a blood bolt whirl, which fires off bolts of shadow damage every two seconds for six seconds, for a total of three at every member in the raid. This is where you'll have the most deaths until people learn to spread out. You will have two air phases, and if you see a third, it's because you're already wiping. Bringing up your rangefinder helps tremendously in this fight. Good luck with Blood Queen, and if you have any tips, suggestions, or corrections, please add them to the comments. Thanks for watching!